welcome to we teach so now in this session we'll discuss what are the different aspects that are involved in designing or developing a learning system what we know so far for a to design a learning system is to develop a model or else to generate some machine learning model what is the basic thing that we need we required some data or else you can call it as an experience here you required some data whether it is direct data or indirect data all that is different so you required some basic information where we call it as training data also you can call it so now this training data is given to some algorithm any algorithm it can be a supervised learning algorithm supervised learning algorithm or else it can be an unsupervised learning algorithm all right so now now after training after performing training with this algorithm on this data what do you generate you generate some model okay so now this model will be used for some prediction or else for some other purpose so that is what we do and that is what is meant by learning here so now here in today's session we'll discuss what are the major concepts or else what important aspects are required in order to develop this model so before seeing all these points now as we already know we, we can tell that one thing is i required some data i required some experience point number 1 and what else i need i required some algorithm i required some function or else i'll just call it as an algorithm here i required some algorithm to train the data and what else i get after training what do you get you get a model okay so maybe after that what i need i may want to improve the performance so maybe the the model that we have generated earlier may not be giving you better outcome so for improving the performance of that particular model i may be doing something so this this is the basic thing that we do so now coming to our syllabus to our content now so what are the aspects that we have first one is choosing the training experience training experience is nothing but the data that we take to generate a model second one is choosing the target function target function means the final model that we are generating that is uh, what algorithm you take whether you take classification you take regression you take clustering so how do you define how do you tell depending upon what depending upon the data that we take so what type of algorithm should be applied that only we are calling it as choosing the target function so whether you whether you should use a k means clustering algorithm or else decision tree algorithm or else some simple linear regression algorithm that we need to define so that is nothing but choosing the target function so once the target function you have cho chosen i mean like algorithm that you have already chosen depending upon the data that we take next what do you do now we need to know how to represent that target function right so here again to in this part only again to one is what algorithm should be applied depending upon the data set and once you have considered one algorithm how do you represent that how do you represent that so here choosing a representation for the target function if you take a decision tree algorithm the representation will be in the form of a tree if you take a simple linear regression algorithm the representation will be in the form of uh, a line so on right so if you take a clustering algorithm if your target function is to be like a cluster then i take a clustering algorithm then the representation will be in the form of groups or else clusters if it is a uh, association rule mining what will be the representation of a target function here it will be a rule right so x implies y rule this is what is called representation of a target function next okay now till now data is taken algorithm for training is decided and we have already generated a model representation it is represented means already model is generated that is what we mean so now what we need to do i need to improve what i need to improve the performance already in the definition of learning systems only we have taken we have studied that so the performance of the task t will improve with experience e that is what we have studied so once you have some task and for that task you are representing an equation or else some model now 
द मॉडल परफॉर्मेंस शुड बी वेरी गुड सो फॉर दैट वॉट यू नीड टू डू आई नीड टू डू सम अप्रॉक्सीमेशन आई नीड टू डू सम ऑप्टिमाइजेशन सो दैट द प्रिडिक्शन एरर विल बी लेस बिटवीन द प्रिडिक्टेड वैल्यू एंड एक्चुअल वैल्यू सो दैट इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड फंक्शन अप्रॉक्सीमेशन फंक्शन सो वेन हाउ यू इम्प्रूव द परफॉर्मेंस यूजली वॉट वी डू इन सुपरवाइज लर्निंग आई टेक अ डेटा आई टेक एन अलगारदम एंड आई जनरेट अ मॉडल एंड आई टेक वन अनोन डेटा सेट एंड दैट अनोन डेटा सेट विल बी गिवेन टू अर मॉडल इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिडिक्ट द क्लास लेबल सो नव सी during testing process maybe your test data actual value is something like yes but the predicted value may be no so here there is a difference right so there is difference here or else numerically we'll talk about instead of categorical values suppose the actual value of your data set may be like it is um a rent of a house let it be 21000 21000 is the actual rent depending upon all input features and with the help of the model that i generated the predicted value may be 19 200 so on right so what will be the difference here the difference will be like 1000 plus 1800 is the difference here so this 1800 we need to reduce so this is the actual value and predicted value the difference between this actual value and predicted value should be less so when it is less performance of this model is automatically increased that is what is nothing but function approximation algorithm and finally final design if final design is something like the overall view right so this is the overview of the entire steps or else aspects that are involved while developing a learning system so now we'll see each in detail so for that i just in here i just told you very in general in, in general cases i have explained you this but as part of our, our syllabus i have a specific example which is called a checkers learning problem so you have a task what is the task here playing checkers is a task which is like chess playing chess okay and what is the performance measure here performance measure is p so what is performance measure in this case number of games won against the opponent is nothing but performance and what is the training experience e here games that we have played so far i mean like as a part of training how many games we have played that will be considered as an experience e games played against itself is nothing but an experience e so in order to complete this task in order to complete this entire uh, checkers learning problem here the design of the learning to complete the design of the learning system first we need to know what is the exact type of knowledge to be learned and how or how the knowledge or else the model is represented for the target knowledge and what is the learning mechanism that we are so with this we will come to know what is the exact exact type of knowledge to be considered and what is the representation of the target knowledge that is representation of a model that we have generated and what is the learning mechanism what algorithm we have used so first first and foremost important step in designing a learning system is choosing the training experience data set or else the information that we give for the learning algorithm is the basic input so depending upon the data set only your, your model performance or else some all something else which is related to the model will be dependent on so the three important attributes while considering this training experience training experience experience is nothing but the previous data historical data that we take in order to perform learning process so the three important attributes that are considered while choosing the training experience is type of the training experience degree to which the learners control the sequence of training examples and distribution of examples over the final system okay so this is these are the three important points related while choosing a training experience here or else training data so what type of training experience we are taking are we taking labeled data or else are we taking unlabeled data so we already know what is labeled data and unlabeled data so supervised data that is you have input features and also corresponding output features unlabeled data means only you have a sequence of input features you don't have output feature so that is what is called type of training experience and that which is nothing but direct and indirect feedback so direct means label indirect means unlabeled data 
right so what is the second important point degree to which the learners control the sequence of training examples how many training examples or else how many sample uh, instances should be considered in order to train how number of samples suppose if you give almost one one lakh instances or else one thousand instances for a model maybe the computational time is more even computational time is more means performance is degrading so if you give only 100 instances to train maybe a prediction may not be correct in all cases so you need to tell you need to decide how many number of instances or examples should be given to perform training so that the performance of the final model will be good okay so that is what is called degree to which the learners control the sequence of training examples and how well it third point is distribution of examples over which the final system performance must be measured so distribution of examples means usually in machine learning applications what we do is suppose if you are given thousand samples thousand instances now you need to decide how many should be given for training and how many instances should be given for testing so these are the steps that we use if you are developing a machine learning application in that cases the entire data set is divided into two parts training set and testing set so training set is used for generating a model and a testing set is used to measure the performance of the model before we perform original prediction right so all these are the different points related to choosing the training experience now coming to the second one okay i have data now i have decided what type of data should be taken for training now what i need to do i need to represent right i need to to have some algorithm first so for that what type of target function how you should model your function what type of algorithm should be used depending upon the data set so sometimes you use regression problem sometimes you use classification problem depending upon what depending upon the training data that we consider but when you come to checkers problem here here you need to represent the target function in some way if if the input features are like this output value may be like this so you need to define so that is what we discuss for checkers problem here so first let the function be like this choose move choose move is the name of a function which is a mapping from b to m b is the number of legal board states so here you can represent b is the number of legal board states and m is the set of all set of all legal moves that happen on a checkers board right so maybe initially you can represent your target function like this but to make it more clear it is not that clear so to make it more clear here what we'll do is instead of representing um, mapping uh, legal moves here what we do is when i move something and to make it like uh, to make it to make the process simple instead of representing your target function like this you can choose this function what let v be a case v be a function where it is a mapping from set of legal board states b to some real value r okay so for example these are the different examples we have see here so let us therefore define the target value v of b suppose if you have a data like this for this input features how do you represent your output feature so for that we are writing all this so if b is final board state that is one suppose on playing a game and after some set of moves if i feel that it is the final move then v of b is represented as 100 there are no further moves this is the final move that we do on a checkers checker board and finally i just want to represent it as we won the game so then we represent it as v of b is equal to 100 similarly if b is final board state that is lost that is we lost the game and and this will be the final move there are no further moves to be done then we represent it as v of b is equal to minus 100 and third case if b is final board state that is drawn then we represent it as v of b is equal to zero the fourth case if b is not a final state in the game but still there are some other moves in your chuckers board then we represent v of b is equal to v of b dash where b dash is the best final 
board state so this is how you represent the target function it's all up to you it depends upon the type of data set or else it depends upon the algorithm that we consider but for this example we have represented suppose if i want to move a coin or else uh, that particular object from one place to another place there should be some function right so that i am representing it as a choose move so to make the representation more simple i am representing it as v from b to r so these are the different representations that we have considered for the target function so v of b is equal to 100 means there are no further moves and we won the game v of b is equal to minus 100 means we lost the game and there are no further moves so v of b is equal to 0 means this is the final board state and further we cannot do anything if we are if uh, v of b is equal to v of b dash it indicates that still there are some other moves to be done but b dash is said to be the best move right so that is what is called representation of a target function choosing a target function so these are the two major steps that are involved in designing your uh, learning problem thank you